You're listening to the Morphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Morphology Podcast, aka Murph here, to share interviews about biking experiences from cyclists who have pedaled to places all over. Each week, we will get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to these adventures, you may wonder, why haven't I done that yet? On the show today is Daniel Troya, the traveling dude. He is a filmmaker who at one point did a little questioning of life, needing some soul searching, and hopped on his bike to find the answers. He has been on some epic bike touring adventures, and on at least two tours, he took along his GoPro to film his experience. His first film, called Two Wheels to Freedom, documents his tour from Rome to Amsterdam and is full of adventures along with beautiful scenery. Bike Touring to Daniel is all about the freedom, where you just get on a bike, ride, and let the adventure come to you. His second film documents his tour across the U.S., where he took off on his loaded surly long-haul trucker without food or money, hoping to find both along the way. Not only was he able to find both while biking for seven months, he also discovered great human connection with strangers. This film will be out soon and is called We Are In This Together. Daniel described it perfectly when he said, there's something about the constant rhythm of the pedals plus the fresh air that stimulates the brain. This guy gives off a contagious positive vibe, and I cannot wait to see what he does next. All right. Well, on the podcast today, we have Daniel Troya. Hi, Daniel. Hey, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you. I discovered you, I can't remember, somewhere on social media, um, you were talking about a film that you produced and have out there in the interwebs for people to watch. And I had to contact you right away to see if you'd be on the podcast. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm uh, super excited to speak with you about everything. And um, I think, first of all, I think it's such a cool idea for a podcast. So, oh, cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. Oh, good. Awesome. Well, yeah. glad to have you here. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. sure the listeners are too, because they're all like tuning in and hopefully mm-hmm. they'll uh, learn something new and maybe be inspired by you. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'm gonna throw it out there real quick. Uh, you have a film right now out there called Two Wheels to Freedom, which I have watched, and I'm going to give you all kinds of praises in a little bit because I absolutely loved it. And then you have another film um, soon to be released, and it's called We Are All in This Together. And I watched the trailer on that one, and I am so excited for that film as well. So before. I let you talk about those. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about where you live and what cycling is like there? Yeah, I live in uh, Monterey, California. Oh, okay. um, Yeah, we have a beautiful bike path that goes along the coast, which um, I'm on that, you know, three or four times a week kind of cruising, you know, and it's a a great spot for cycling. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, yeah. And are you mostly on pavement or trails or are you an off-roader? Yeah, pavement for sure. Yeah, okay. I, I actually, I've only had, uh, the last seven years, I just ride my surly long-haul trucker. Oh, uh, yeah. Touring bicycle, and uh, I don't have any other bikes. I just ride that one, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so connected that... to it through all the experiences and stuff, you know? Oh, sure, yeah. There's all kinds of, uh, I, I can hear where I'm recording, my bikes are all within view, and I look at them all longingly, you know, like, which bike do I ride next? Uh-huh. So, I know you can only ride one at a time, but oh my gosh, they have a lot of emotional value to them. Exactly. So um, speaking of touring, you know, you do mostly pavement. Um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, what it is about bike touring that you like and a little bit more about that Surly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. With with bike touring, it's just the freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your, uh, you have your cooking gear, your tent, your sleeping bag, and then you're good to go, you know, and then you just kind of let the adventures come to you. I think it's really special. There's like a certain level of unpredictability when you're on a bike tour and you wake up in the morning and you don't know what to expect. You don't know what the weather is going to be like or, um, you know, who you're going to meet or what kind of bike problems you might have or what kind of amazing experiences, you know, lie in front of you. So that's what I love about bike touring. 
and even the bad experiences uh, become some of, you know, like the favorite stories to share. That's so well said. I feel the exact same way. And I, I always mm -hmm. say the same thing is when you're living in that moment of, you know, a huge headwind or a hailstorm or if you get caught in the snow or something or it's incredibly hot, you know, it might be kind of tough in the moment. But those are the stories that I usually share the most. <laughs> yeah, I don't really yeah. talk about the ones that were everything went perfect, you know. Right, right. And I think that it, it go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I just think that it builds um, a lot of character when you go through those difficult times on a bike tour, because I think that's what bike touring, a big part of it, it's about. It's not easy, but you um, you grow so much as a person, and I think it builds a lot of just self-confidence because you feel like, you know what, if I was, I was able to do this on a bike tour, you know, and so I'm able to do things back in my normal life, it makes it a lot easier, you know? Oh, yeah. And for, you know, those listening who maybe are hearing bike touring for the first time, which I hope is not the case, because I talk about it mm -hmm. all the time. But mm -hmm. it's basically when you take your bike, and you add bags or racks or whatever, and then you put everything that you're going to need on the bike. And there's something to be said about being able to bike. And when you're tired, or when it's dark, or when you just find something cool that you can just stop and everything you need is on your bike. So you can set up your tent. You can hopefully have a snack or some food. Everything you're set. Yeah. That's again, very well said. Um, there's that kind of, um, self-supported part of it, which is really special, mm -hmm. you know, which I love about bike touring. Yeah. And you mentioned that you, uh, camp, right? Like yeah. you set up a tent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, so everyone kind of knows when you go camping, you have a tent and a, probably a sleeping bag and, you know, you have to have clothes and some sort of water or food, but do you ever carry a luxury item? Like maybe something <laughs> that you want, but you don't necessarily need? Yeah. Yeah. I, I carry a foam roller. One of those oh, yeah. exercise piece of exercise equipment because, um, you know, um, my back gets kind of tight. My quadriceps get kind of tight. And I feel like it takes up a lot of space in my bag. But it's one of those things after a long day, I love to just kind of lie on that foam roller for a couple of days or for a couple of minutes, you know, and kind of roll everything out. It's for body maintenance, you know. Oh, yeah. And, you know, once everyone watches your film, <laughs> they're going to see that you do some epic elevation <laughs> in a normal day. Like, it is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was um in, in the movie Two Wheels to Freedom. Yeah, I crossed um crossed the Swiss Alps and there was a a period of I did six mountain passes in five days, you know, and that was oh, some pretty intense riding, but it was also some of the most beautiful riding I've ever done. And uh one particular part when I was crossing from Italy into uh Switzerland, there's a thing called the Stelvio Pass that I rode up. And I, I, I planned this a couple months ahead of time because I saw this photo of this unreal mountain pass. It had 48 switchbacks going up oh, the mountain. Geez. And yeah, it was a, uh, it was a 5,000 foot climb. And, uh, that took me into Switzerland. That was probably the, well, definitely one of the most memorable mountain passes I've ever ridden. And did you have to walk any of it? No, no. I really like to get in the mo of the, the mood of just trying to, um, really just, I look at it like a nice challenge, you know, and I think as long as you just kind of take your time, that's the best way of doing it. And I like the intensity, like when there's, when you wake up in the morning and you know you have to climb a mountain pass, you're kind of in a different mindset that day when you're on a bike tour mm. compared to when it's maybe a little more flat, you know? Mm -hmm. And then again, it's just, it's always worth it because once you get to the top, I mean, you get rewarded with a really amazing downhill. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I can, I can, well, I was going to say I can't imagine the views, but I can because you've got them captured on film. Yeah. So it's just amazing. So let's get into it. Yeah. So you uh, are a filmmaker mm -hmm. and you produced a film called Two Wheels to Freedom. So will you tell us a little bit about, you know, you, you've kind of given us a few hints, but tell us like how you turn this adventure into a film. Yeah. So um, it's kind of an interesting story, but uh, 2016, my, um, my father passed away and I was just kind of really starting to question a lot of things about life. And I felt like I needed to just get away mm -hmm. to kind of take everything in and kind of process everything. And so I decided to do a bike tour in Europe and I packed my bags and just kind of took a flight to, to Rome. And the goal was to ride from Rome, which is Southern Europe all the way to, um, to Amsterdam, which is the mm. is Northern Europe, you know, and I didn't really have much of a plan at all. I knew I was going to stop in Switzerland to work on a farm for a couple weeks. 
But besides those three places, I, I really didn't know where I was going to go. And um, yeah, again, I just felt like I needed some time to kind of step away my, from my own life. And uh, mm -hmm. I decided to bring a GoPro camera just, just to film kind of my own, just the experience for myself. And then maybe after a couple of weeks of being on the road, I realized, you know, I think I can turn this into a, to a, to a good movie, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just continued filming everything that happened along the way. And then it just kind of ended up, the story kind of tells itself as it unfolds, you know? So, and I, and I really like, um, you know, sometimes when I have, just like anything, when you're traveling, some days are better than others. And when I was kind of having an off day, I like to break out my camera and I'd look for different shots to get. And that, that kind of, kind of, kept me more interested in my bike tour is trying to kind of um, capture cool shots mm. with my GoPro. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, as far as, I don't, I guess I could look at a map, but what kind of distance are you talking about when you're saying Rome to Amsterdam? Yeah. So I took an interesting route because I didn't really know where I was going. I think in total, I covered about 1500 miles. It was mm. actually not as far as it was, I thought it was going to be. So I, that's why I was kind of, wandering around Europe you know and that's why I stopped to work on the farm for six weeks I wasn't originally planning to stay there for that long but um because I had so much time I gave myself like 10 weeks and so yeah and I think in, in total I covered about 1500 miles okay and you have to tell the listeners about your experience working at that farm because you're we're talking I mean the bear minimum as far as equipment to keep this farm running and I was amazed at the things that you did each day yeah thank you it was a um, really special um, opportunity I stay I live with this family that um, in this small village with only 75 people and it's tucked away in the Swiss Alps and uh, it really is like taking a step back in time the, the, um, we were making hay all summer because the the cows were out in the fields and uh, making cheese and mm -hmm. so for the for the summer we had to stock the barn with as much hay. So when when the when the cows return in the winter time they have food. So the hillsides were so steep that you couldn't use normal machines to 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 harvest the 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 grass. So what we had to do was we had to do a lot of it by hand. And as you'll see in the film, the the, the farmer I stay with, he's like uh, he's in his late sixties, and this guy was like Superman. I mean, he would carry the hay on his back up these steep hillsides. And again, I mean, this guy is unreal, the strength that he has, you know, and he just, he lives out there and there's a sense of inner peace that he feels mm -hmm. um, just living out there. He has his la small plots of land and he's part of a community, which I think is really important just as far as human needs. It's important to feel like you're part of something and all the food they eat is locally grown it's all fresh water. He's getting exercise and there's a lack of stress out there. So it just creates this really real sense of true happiness. And to add to that, you know, all that you just mentioned, the views, like mm -hmm. I'm, I would assume every time you look off into the distance, it like probably gives you this calming feeling because it's just spectacular views. Yeah, you're right, Kathy. That's, that's a really good point. Um, I never got tired of waking up in the morning and opening the window and looking at the views. It's, mm -hmm. it's unreal. And everywhere, every single direction you look, you're looking at massive mountains. You know, oh, yeah. it's right it, dead in the middle of the Swiss Alps. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when you're saying you couldn't get like a tractor to, you know, go along on those hills, you're, you're saying hill in a light I mean, it, those were so steep. I couldn't even believe how you were walking along and using, what is that chopper thing? Uh, a, a, yeah, the scythe. Scythe, thank you. Yeah, I was just like, holy crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it was really tough work. It was really tough work. And uh, But again, you have the views to enjoy up there. Yeah. So I would kind of get in, it's almost like a sense of meditation up there. Yeah. Just kind of getting a good work, uh, work rhythm, you know? Well, okay, so mm -hmm. speaking of, you know, just scenery and the beauty, give us some highlights of your trip, like some of the places you went to, some of the exciting things you saw, people you met, like just give us some highlights. A quick interruption to tell you this week's podcast is sponsored by Lizard Lips Lip Balm. These great lip balms contain natural ingredients, come in a variety of flavors, and you can choose certified organic or balms with sun protection. Check it out at lizardlips.net. Now back to the show. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
as I mentioned, I started in Rome, and I think the highlight of Italy for me was riding through Tuscany mm. in Italy, just because that was uh, late May, and all the all the hills were like golden, like mm. golden brown. It was so gorgeous riding through those fields in, in Tuscany. Um, without a doubt, again, the mountain passes in Switzerland, some of those downhills, I was going pretty fast, you know, and um, one of the, another one of the highlights was getting um, riding over a mountain pass in freezing rain. Mm. And uh, that was literally the coldest I'd ever been in my whole life. And because I was up at um, close to 8000 feet and it at the very top, it started snowing. That was one of the very memorable. I didn't have much of a plan at, once I got into Switzerland. So I decided to go towards Austria because I didn't know anything about Austria. Mm. And that was another highlight because I just I found this like bright blue river and I just followed this river for like three days into Austria. And that was so great because some of the best camping I've ever done in my life was there, you know, and it was so great because mm -hmm. it was in the middle of the summer. It was hot. And then I would just ride. And then whenever I got, I got tired, you know, I would just jump into the river and that would rejuvenate me. Mm -hmm. And then I jump back on the bike and I would continue riding. And then, you know, riding through Germany along um, the Rhine Valley and it was just it was just full of medieval castles. Mm. And that was super special to be just riding a bicycle and just looking up and seeing massive castles. And uh, and then, you know, the Netherlands, um, which is the bicycle capital of the world. Mm -hmm. That was the easiest riding I've ever done. I think if someone was going to, you know, a first time rider and they wanted to go on a bike tour in Europe, I'd recommend the Netherlands because the entire country is filled with, um, it's connected by bicycle paths. Mm. So it's extremely easy to ride across the entire country and the country. It's one of the flattest countries in the world. There's not a hill, oh, you nice. know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was just some of the highlights, you know? Well, I do know, I recall at least one mishap that happened uh, when I watched the film, uh, when you were in a busy tunnel. But any other mishaps that you want to talk about, including that one? Yeah, yeah. So the story with the tunnel is, this is the one time where I feel like I, I must have just, I wasn't paying attention to the signs and the language barrier got got the best of me. There must have been a sign that said no, no pedestrians allowed, mm -hmm. and I didn't see it. And so I rode into this tunnel, and I had no idea that this was an eight-mile tunnel. Right. And the, the sidewalk I was I was riding on continued to get more and more narrow. Oh, no. And at one point, I just realized this, this huge bus drove past me and it shook my bike. And it, that freaked me out because I felt like I was about to fall into traffic. Yeah. You know? And so I felt stuck. And so I had to hitchhike out of there. And thankfully, I was picked up by somebody who um, who really helped me out. But, um, yeah, that was probably the closest I've ever come to dying <laughs> oh, on a bicycle tour. And it was uh, just a dumb mistake uh, that that clips in the film. And then, uh, you know, another part of the film or just and also my experience was I got lost when I was riding through Tuscany. I was using Google Maps, but I, I think it, it took me on a, a walking path and it took me into the mountains. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and this was not a place to ride a bicycle at all. And uh yeah, I end up uh, stumbling across a, a wild boar in her in her baby, and <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was about to get attacked by a wild boar, and I was looking over my shoulder for the next hour, trying to find my way. I, I was stuck out in the mountains for three hours, just wandering. I was pushing my bike because the it was I, you you weren't able to ride a bicycle through there. Mm -hmm. It was really rough terrain. Well, not and to mention up, not to mention yeah. that you had all that weight on the bike. I mean, you still <laughs> had all your gear, your bags. Like it wasn't just a hike a bike where you could throw it over your shoulder i mean you had a, you had a yeah. bike that's a good point kathy yeah i brought 40 pounds of gear so that thing was definitely heavy yeah and so i didn't know what i was doing out there and it's kind of funny i mean i can laugh about it now but it, when i got into that moment i had no idea how i ended up out in the, <laughs> in the middle of the mountains you know <laughs> Well, and it turned out great. You know, you're still alive and all that. But I loved how you ended up at uh, like a fence line and you're like, oh, I think this must be somebody's you know, private property. And luckily, the woman was very friendly because you're like, ah, I'm lost. I, you know, I am. Am I OK to enter your property? And that yeah. could have been the exact opposite. It could have been like, oh, crap. You know, these people are like, no, get off my property. And then you'd be stuck in the mountain. You'd probably still be. <laughs> You're totally right. Because again, I just wandered into some person's backyard. And you know, their backyard is the mountains. So yeah. I, 
I think the lady was pretty confused. Like, where where did you come from? <laughs> How did you end up here, this strange American guy? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, okay, so hopefully we've sold people on watching this, but where can they go to watch it? <laughs> a quick interruption to give a shout out to Primal Wear. Cycling is their passion and apparel is their craft. So if you're in the market for a New Jersey, bibs, mask, or any cycling apparel, go to primalwear.com and use code Primal Murph to get 20% off your purchase. Yes, 20% off. Now back to the show. Yeah, so to, to watch the movie Two Wheels to Freedom, if you just go on YouTube and you type in bike across Europe movie, mm. it should be the first um, first video that pops up. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, yeah, so bike across Europe movie, and then in parentheses, it'll say Two Wheels to Freedom. Yeah, and it's I'm going to give it uh, five stars. So it was a great, great film to watch. Thank um, you. Yeah, for the biking experience, for the views, uh, you had a really good sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Like some of the traffic going by you was really sketchy, but yet you were, you know, held your wits about you and you lived to tell about all that good stuff. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and in addition to that bike adventure, which I'm sure that you've been on plenty of other bike adventures, mm-hmm. but you have a second film in the works. So tell us about that one. Yeah. So this second film, which is playing in film festivals right now around the country, is called We Are All In This Together. And for this particular movie, I, uh, I left California with no food and money. And I brought a sign with me, a cardboard sign that said, biking across country, ran out of food, anything helps. Mm. And I equipped myself with hidden camera glasses and to capture the real, the the genuine reactions and interactions that I had with people who I came across. Mm -hmm. And I was standing in front of grocery stores and when somebody would stop and talk to me and if I was fortunate to receive, you know, some food. I'd ask them, I'd say, hey, do you have a story about when somebody really helped you in your life? And I started collecting these stories across the country. And again, the reason I use hidden camera glasses is because I wanted them, I didn't want them to know in the moment that I was making a movie. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I would ask them for permission. I'd say, hey, I'm actually making a documentary. May I use this footage? And I also brought a drone with me to capture the landscape shots. And um, yeah, I ended up spending seven months riding across um, America, I, I rode through 18 states and um, filmed the entire experience, the, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the mm-hmm. sad. And um, yeah, the movie is about finding the human connection during divisive times. And what inspired the film was just like everybody, I think a lot of Americans, we're all aware that we're extremely a divide, very divided country right now, mm-hmm. you know? And um, I was questioning just um, as far as the human connection, and I was, you know, I was feeling like um, just, yeah, the angst that all Americans are feeling. And, um, yeah, the, the movie is really about showing that there's there's more that brings us together than what separates us. Mm-hmm. And the film features some pretty heavy emotional moments that I was able to experience as far as connecting with people, you know. And it captures some really beautiful moments as far as there was numerous people who were homeless who, who approached me and helped me, you mm-hmm. know, and, and they didn't have a place to live. They were living on the street and they still had something to give, um, which was really beautiful to see. And again, for example, th- as far as the connection part, it shows um, people from all different types of the backgrounds and different countries and languages mm-hmm. and all of us connecting, you know, and showing, um, yeah, the common experiences that we all experience as, as humans mm-hmm. and um yeah and also it has an adventure aspect to it as well i crossed the great basin desert in nevada and that was 300 miles of desert with only um four towns and that was prob- that was the most intense riding i've ever had there was one specific day where i had 84 miles to ride three mountain passes and no services oh, wow. and um that was really intense because it was summertime and it was obviously the desert and um i crossed the rocky mountains twice i crossed the rocky mountains going west towards new york i crossed them in colorado and then coming back i crossed them in october in montana and that was pretty crazy because um there was an arctic cold front when i was riding through montana and it got down to 13 degrees and i didn't have winter i didn't have winter gear with me it was just summer gear because i wasn't planning on being on the road for the whole time and 
I was wearing every piece of clothing I had when I was when I was when I was sleeping, you know, and that was pretty that was that was scary because I didn't want to get hypothermia. Mm-hmm. Was chased by thunderstorms, massive, the most massive thunderstorms I've ever seen in Kansas. Um, really, really massive thunderstorms. Got caught in hailstorms. You know, was om- you know almost attacked by numerous dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think it kind of captures just my entire experience. And again, it's it's half half of it is about you know the bike touring experience and that adventure, and then the other part of it is finding you know. A, uh, the human connection. Mm-hmm. And did it, so, um, you know, obviously the biking adventure is, you know, going to be exactly what it is wherever you experienced it, but did you have a renewed outlook in humanity or did your feelings change after you experienced this event? Yeah, absolutely. Felt, felt, I felt different afterwards. And it's again, just, just having the chance to meet people from different backgrounds mm-hmm. and going to parts of the country where, that are different than the way that I think, you know, in talking to those people and then realizing that we're really not all that different. You know, when it comes down to the core values of life, as far as we all seek happiness, I think most of us want the best for each other. Mm -hmm. Um, We share love with each other. You know, we, we, um, we experience hardships in our life. We experience grief, you know, and those are some common, um, some commonalities that we all share as human beings Mm -hmm. that, you know, during our experience on earth, I think. And it was just kind of, seeing that firsthand really changed my perspective on things. And again, one of the most important things I witnessed was being helped by helped out by people who had nothing. And it made me look at all the things that I have in my life and all the opportunities that I have compared to a lot of other people who don't have them. Mm. For example, I rode through East St. Louis and it had the highest crime rate in the country. And when I rode through it and just seeing the amount of poverty that they're experiencing and the lack of opportunity that they have there, it made me think about my own life and all the opportunities I've, that I've had mm-hmm. and just things like that, you know, and that, that those experiences will never leave me. I think that's more, I will remember those than even more so than the, the cycling aspect of it. Yeah. You know? Wow. That's a really unique yeah. opportunity that you were, it's really cool that you were able to experience. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have yeah. a plan or a date when the public will be able to see this film? Yeah, so right now, um, first of all, if you go on, onto my website, it's it's we are all in this together movie dot com. Okay. You'll see there's um that will give you you can watch the trailer there for the film and um that's where I list where it's playing as far as film festivals and it talks about awards, it's one, et cetera, and my email is on there too. Oh cool. And I, I can grab you if and if people want to send me an email, I'll put you on a list and when it's playing virtually next, I can just send them the link so they can watch it virtually or they can also they can watch it possibly when it's playing in their town Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and so yeah as far as distribution right now um i'm showing in film festivals because i'm hoping to find a distributor you know like a streaming platform like amazon prime or netflix Mm -hmm. and um and then it will be available to the to the the whole public you know like that but again if you if anybody wants to send me an email i'll be sure to get you uh get you an opportunity to, to watch the film excellent and say that website one more time yeah, it's we are all in this together movie dot com. Excellent. And again, yeah, you can watch the trailer there and then read a little bit more about the film and there's photos and things like that. Yeah, and definitely watch the trailer because it's really good. It's some uh, good shots of you dumpster diving for sure. Oh, yeah, that's a whole <laughs> other aspect that I didn't even mention. Yeah, I read a book on dumpster diving before I left, and um, it was shocking to see how much food is is thrown away in the back of grocery stores every day. Oh, my. And And it was uh, like literally packaged food. Like it wasn't even like it was in a dirty dumpster. You know, obviously it was in a dirty dumpster, but you were pulling out like prepackaged food. Yeah, it was it was it was really shocking. I mean, pretty most of the trip I was dumpster diving and um, I would grab my snacks for the day. And we're talking food that was still really good. Mm-hmm. Bananas, apples, strawberries, um, bagels. I came across steaks, yogurt, chicken, eggs, obviously. And um, yeah, I, I, I dive into that in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally is true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've never, um, you know, done a month long 
tour or even longer than that. But I've done plenty of like seven to 10 day bike Mm -hmm. tours. And you go from, you know, every day you wake up, you ride your bike, you go to bed, you wake up, you ride, you know, you don't have a lot of thoughts, you know, like stresses, except for things relating to biking. So when you go on these epic long, you know, you, I think you said seven months when you were out touring America, how do you get come back home and adjust to, I'm going to put in quotes, normal life or just yeah. you know, life like the rest of everyone else is doing dealing with? Yeah, Kathy, that's a really good question. I can say after this last one, spending seven months on the road, um, in general, I'm, I'm, I love to be outdoors. But when I got back, it was, um, it was late December. And from that point and all the way into late January, so about a whole month, I just wanted to stay inside. Mm. I was so mentally and physically exhausted and, oh, and my yeah. body was so beat up that I just needed to sleep and rest, you know? And mm-hmm. again, for me, I mean, if I wasn't filming a documentary, there's no way I would have spent seven months on the road because mm. that just, it, it was, I, I really pushed it physically, you know? And um, this the things like not having your own space, like as far as just, my like four walls and a roof yeah and the things like taking a shower that it totally changed my perspective like i still to this day when i get into a shower i feel so grateful every single time because Mm -hmm. for this particular experience i was showers were hard to come by Mm -hmm. you know finding a place to bathe was really challenging and that that started to really wear on me mentally and then i'm just it is tough because (laughs) When I got back to, like you said, kind of normal life, I felt it felt strange because everything was so predictable. <laughs> right. And I think I, I fell into a, a little state of depression because when you're on the road, it's like you're getting a constant high every day because everything is all your senses are stimulated, mm-hmm. you know, and then coming back home, I just felt confused. <laughs> I needed to take some time just to kind of process the whole seven months. I didn't start editing the film until about six weeks later because I didn't even know what to make of it. You know? Sure, and I I understand uh, my own version of that kind of you know depression feeling of you're like oh my gosh I now I am within four walls and a roof instead of yeah the scenery so I get it I get what you're saying yeah and you know Kathy just one thought that came to mind that I just didn't want to forget was anybody who's listening who's who's never been on a tour the tours don't have to be super intense mm-hmm. that's what's beautiful about a bike tour if you want to ride fifteen miles every day. And that's totally great. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, I think um, just do what sticks best to you. I mean, I've in general, I ride slow. I ride. um, I don't I I I, I stop. I look around. I I talk to people in towns. I think for me, that's my favorite kind of bike tour. Mm -hmm. Um, The miles. I don't care about how many miles I'm doing a day. It really doesn't matter because I, I think that the bicycle is a means of travel. You know, it's not about how many miles you're doing every day, but it's the experiences that you're having while you're on a bicycle. Well said. And that is, that's the cool thing about bike touring is it is, it's whatever you make of it. So even if you're bike touring in your own community, it's still bike touring. You're still, you know, getting out there and trying new things. Exactly. Exactly. And I know for me personally, Kathy, that I do my best thinking and reflecting on a bicycle. There's something Mm. about the constant rhythm of the pedals kind of going in the mm-hmm. fresh air and the blood flow moving. And then my brain gets so stimulated and it's a, uh, for me, it's, it's medicine, you know? Yeah. Well, and you know, the fact that you're filming and, you know, creating a film, a movie, it shows that, you know, it, it brings out the artistic side of you as well. Very well said. Very well said. Yeah. Well, with all of that said, do you have any adventures on your horizon or are you just going to chill out for a while? Yeah, so I plan, my next thing I've been planning is I want to make a bicycle travel show in, in Europe. And so basically for this show, I'd be riding my bicycle across Europe and I'd be stopping to work on farms and vineyards in exchange for a place to stay, right? And this whole travel show is going to show, it's, it's, it's about alternative ways of travel, for people who are looking for a different kind of experience besides the traditional way. You know, for example, I'd be riding through Tuscany and I would stop to work on a vineyard, you know, and show that how they harvest the grapes. And it'd be similar in Two Wheels of Freedom. You kind of see an example of where I stopped on, on, on the farm and work. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to base the travel show on. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
And and so, let's say people are going to watch your film and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I could never do this. Mm-hmm. What would you say to them? Like they have a dream, they want to go out and bike tour. Yeah. Can they? Should they? I, and again, and you're asking all the great questions, Kathy. I appreciate you <laughs> asking these questions because the first time I ever went on a bicycle tour was when I was 28 years old and I literally had never camped in my life. Whoa. I was so nervous about camping and, and that was the first time I, and I remember leaving, I left from Portland, Oregon and I was going to ride to New York city and I had no idea what I was doing. I was with a friend, but the beautiful thing about bike touring is it re- it makes you realize that you're so much more capable than you believe. Oh yeah. You know, and that's what I, I think it's so, it's such a beautiful experience to have that, you know, and, and to push yourself and challenge yourself. I met this girl, the person who inspired me to do it when I was in Europe back in 2010. I was in Amsterdam and I met this girl who was riding her bicycle across Europe, playing music, busking Mm. for money. And I remember asking her after her show, like, so wait, you can just ride your bicycle across a continent? And I just, I remember her saying, just do it. Just do it. Mm. And once you start, that's, that's, that's the biggest step. It's just taking that first pedal, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you've done it. Then you're doing it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so well said. Because you can plan and plan and dream and dream for, you know, months or years or even decades. But until you actually do it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And um, I think sometimes it can be overwhelming when you look at the end goal. Let's say you want to cycle for like two weeks and you're like, man, that's going to be you know a couple hundred miles. But if you if you think about, well, today I'm just going to I'm going to try to ride 30 miles today or mm-hmm. 20 Right. And just take it day to day or you can even take it hour to hour. I'm going to ride for an hour today and see how I feel. And then after a couple of days or weeks, you look back and you say, whoa, I just crossed. I just crossed a state on my bicycle, Yeah, you know, or a county or, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Daniel, before we uh, close this out, is there any shout outs you want to give? You know, anybody who's made an impact or if, I don't know if you have sponsors, whatever you want to shout out. I appreciate it. I mean, it's, man, there's a lot to, um, so many people come to mind. I mean, as far as bike touring, the first person I ever went on a bicycle tour, was, his name was Luke. And I owe him so much because he, there was a lot of times in that first bicycle tour, like I said, I felt overwhelmed just because I'd never done anything like that. And we were going across the entire country. And I learned a lot from Luke because he was able to keep us cool during, during the, tough, um, the tough times. So I appreciate Luke because of his composure mm-hmm. and um just as far as the film we are all in this together i really with with the from the bottom of my heart everybody that i met along that journey i just want to thank including the ones that didn't treat me well because it all created part of the experience for me as far as my own personal growth mm-hmm. and um yeah and anybody yeah and also anybody who takes the time to watch my films it just means the world to me because it's something that I, I feel like I have inside of my heart and to be able to create it and share it with people is, is so special. So if you're going to watch my film, um, I want to say now, thank you. And if you have watched my films, thank you. It means the world to me. If you're interested in kind of following some more of what I'm doing um, on my Instagram, it's, it's, it's the underscore traveling underscore dude. That's and you'll see a lot of um, my bicycle experiences on there, stuff that didn't make my films, and then um yeah and then my YouTube channel is again it's the same thing it's the traveling dude, you could subscribe to that and that's probably the best way when I do create this travel show mm-hmm. to see to to see the travel show. Excellent. Yeah. And I will put those same links to Instagram and Facebook, or I'm sorry, Instagram and YouTube, and of course, your websites in a, the show notes so people can reference there too. But man, Daniel, it was so nice to be able to talk to you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do next, because I can feel the energy in you. And if it's anything like the movie that I've already seen, I'm really excited for you and your future. I appreciate it, Kathy, and I, and I want to say one more time, I, I think the pod, your idea of this podcast is so great, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Well, listeners, that's it for this week. Thanks, Daniel, for coming on to talk about your bike touring experiences. I love his attitude about just doing it. He feels we're all capable of more than we believe, and when you look back at some of the things you did that 
you thought you couldn't do? I bet you can agree with him. You can watch his film, Two Wheels to Freedom, on his YouTube channel, which is The Traveling Dude. You can also watch his trailer for the second film there as well. Email me at morphologypodcast at gmail.com. If you have a topic or the name of a cyclist you find interesting, support my podcast at patreon.com slash morphology. Visit my Instagram page for daily entertainment and check out my website for all kinds of bicycle stuff. And a quick shout out to Simmons Electric for sponsoring this episode. I'll leave you with this quote from the unwritten book of morphology. This quote comes from Doug Donaldson. Your bike is a discovery. Your bike is freedom. It doesn't matter where you are when you're on the saddle. You're taken away. Think about it. Mm